What's up everybody and welcome to this video, which actually will be a little bit different than what I usually do. As you might already know if you've seen my previous videos, I tested positive at some point when we were in Mexico before going to Ecuador. And that of course changed our plans completely, which led us to spend some more time in Quito, which previously we didn't intend to. And just to give you the full information, the positive test that I had was actually a false positive. I repeated the test in the same clinic two days later and it turned out negative and they double checked the first test and they admitted that they did some kind of mistake and that my positive diagnosis had been a mistake. Anyways, there we were in Quito. I never thought of Quito as being a very exciting city and the first few days we didn't really see much. We actually booked a hotel that offered all-inclusive service because at that point I didn't know how the situation in Quito would be, if stores would be open, if restaurants would be open. So I thought, yeah, let's be on the safe side. And we actually found a very cheap offer for a good room. The room was beautiful. We got a nice view of the city. Turns out we landed in the more expensive side of the city where everything was more expensive. But it turns out that it actually was a mistake from booking.com and the price that they've shown online was for only one person and not for two, which means that we've only stayed for a few days there and then we looked for a different hotel to spend the rest of our time there. Quito sits at an elevation of about 2850 meters above sea level that's about 9000 feet and that means that the first few days we actually were pretty out of breath. That's just not something that we are used to especially after spending more than two weeks at sea level in Mexico and so the first few days we were very tired we slept a lot and and we didn't do much. But on the third day we decided to go up the hill that was right behind the hotel which is a park with supposedly a view of the Cotopaxi which is a mountain close by that is almost 6,000 meters above sea level and it's a very prominent mountain that you can see from the city. We went up that hill, it was actually pretty boring. You have a view of the other side of the hill, well I call it a hill because it's only 200 meters above the city although it's almost 3,000 meters above sea level. It's something really weird to say but that's what it is. But the view is not very spectacular and if you go further south you actually have a viewpoint which promises you to see the Cotopaxi, the high mountain that I've mentioned before. But <laughs> we didn't really see it because there were trees in the way. I tried to fly the drone to see if we can see the mountain but the weather wasn't good enough so we actually didn't see the mountain. And let me be upfront, we didn't see the mountain in the whole 10 days that we've been there. But as I said, we didn't do much in the first few days. Then we transferred to the next hotel, which is closer to the old town and the so-called Mariscal part of the town, which are more interesting to spend time in because they've got more stores, restaurants, bars. It's a way more interesting experience. So we went to this hotel called Hotel David. What a beautiful building with a nice fountain in the middle. And yes, there was actually this video that I've made talking about the Galapagos Islands, which I filmed in this room. And that's the fountain that you were able to hear in the background in that video. And our room was actually the closest room behind that fountain. So whenever they turned on the fountain in the morning, it would wake us up. When we arrived there, we finally got to see some more of the city of Quito and of the interesting history of Quito and also of the places that are worth sightseeing. Now going to the old town, it is definitely a way more interesting area to be in. You've got the main road with many stores, cafes, restaurants, a lot to eat, a lot to see. And you see that the buildings are actually old, pretty well maintained from the earlier times. Quito does not only have the best maintained old town in any Latin American country, it is also together with Krakow in Poland, the first city to be declared a UNESCO World Cultural Heritage Site. I really didn't know that, which made it more interesting. And in that area you have that beautiful basilica that is actually the largest neo-gothical basilica in Latin America. I don't care much about this neo-gothic stuff but the basilica at least is beautiful from the outside and also from the inside. I'm not really a religious person but I do like well-built, well-maintained religious buildings. And other things that you can do there, which is close by, is go to a hill called El Panecillo. There's like a statue of an angel up there that's not the most interesting part. The interesting part is that from up there you get a beautiful view. Well, if you've got good weather, which we didn't have, you'd also see the Cotopaxi. And from there you actually see how interesting the city is because it's relatively narrow. You have like mountain ranges on the eastern and western side. So the city actually stretches from north to south for about 20 kilometers, but from west to east only for about four kilometers. 
Another dimension getting to the Panetheo, let me tell you that yes, you do have public transport in Quito, mainly buses, but honestly, in the time I spent there, I didn't understand how that transport works. I tried to Google it a little bit, but it's way too difficult if you don't spend some time there and understand the layout of the city and how everything works and is connected. So the best way to get around there is actually taking taxis and taxis are everywhere. So whenever you need a taxi, you will find one close by. As I said, Quito is like in between mountains, it's high in the so-called Sierra, which is like the mountain ridge that cuts Ecuador from north to south in the middle. In the east of the mountains and west of the mountains, you've got the tropical lowlands, but up there the climate is more, well, it's very stable during the year when it comes to temperature. In the night, it usually goes down to 10 degrees. During the day, it goes up to like 23 degrees, but you do have a wet season and a non-wet season. We were there, just as it changed from the dry season to the wet season. So we started to get some rain, some thunderstorms, and thunderstorms can be pretty big up there. Anyways, because of the location, you have a lot of beautiful things to visit close to the city, but we didn't really have the time or the money to visit many things. But there are two things that I want to mention. One is right at the city, and the other one is a bit to the north. Ecuador is where the Europeans first discovered or established or defined the equator, or they actually have proven that the Earth isn't exactly round, that it bulges in the equator and is flatter at the poles. That place called Mitad del Mundo, center of the Earth, is actually where I think a French group of scientists defined the equator back in the 18th century, I think. And you can visit that place. It's marked by a line. You've also got a monument in the center, which you can go up and take photos of the equator or the equator line. You can be with one foot in the northern and the other foot in the southern hemisphere at the same time. But to be honest, the real equator, this is a little bit further to the north, like 200, 300 meters. So they were really, really close. But still, if you when you visit that monument, you won't be exactly at the equator, you will be at the historical equator. And the other interesting place to visit, which is actually closer to the city, is on the western side of the city. You can take a cableway from the edge of the city up to a mountain to about 4,000 meters of elevation. So I wouldn't go there the first day after arriving at Quito. Wait a few days to adapt to the altitude before going up there. If you come from sea level, 4,000 meters is very, very high. And I wouldn't do that in one go. You can walk up to a mountain, which is even higher. We didn't do that. We also weren't prepared or physically ready to do that. But still, you've got a nice view of the city. You can take a coffee, join the view or go further back to a swing, which is like the most awesome swing I've ever been to. It's right at the edge of the mountain, you have a nice view of the city and when you swing you actually feel like you are flying above the city. I really enjoyed that, I didn't know that that was up there, but it gives you some kind of adrenaline rush when you are on that swing. And you can also do horse riding, we didn't do that either. If we had been more prepared, I would have liked to go up to the mountain and Evelyn would have liked to do the horse riding. Turns out that the city is more interesting if you spend some time. The historical center is interesting. The history is interesting. Also how Quito was actually the first city to rebel against the Spanish. I think they were the first ones in South America to get independence, although for only one year. The Spanish then came back, slaughtered everyone, and as far as I've been told, that's what sparked the revolutions in South America. So that's also a very interesting historical fact about the city. You can even go on a hike up to Cotopaxi. You can just go to the foot of the mountain and enjoy an elevation of like 4,500 meters, or you can go up to the mountain. But for that, you have to be more experienced and prepared, of course. But just going to the foot of the mountain is something that you can do. We didn't do it for time and money constraints. Let me mention something else. We've been warned many, many times. At some point, we were flying the drone. There was no one around us. The police car drove by, they stopped there and warned us to hide the phones that someone would come, snatch them and run away. We've had other people telling us to be careful, it's a dangerous city, it's not a nice place to travel alone. Always use a local guide if you want to visit places. It kind of makes you fear the city. We walked a lot around the historical center and we didn't ever have any problems or anyone looking a weird way at us. And yes, that's actually the reason that I didn't film a lot. Only at some point I took the camera out to take some fast photos, some fast footage. Most of the time I only use the GoPro to take footage. That's also why this video is a little bit different. I didn't vlog there. I didn't dare to vlog there because of the fear that the local people instilled into me or into us. Well, anyways, 
this has been the video. It's been a little bit different. Sorry about that. The next videos will be more vlog style again. And we are going to Galapagos. So this is going to be beautiful. The most beautiful place in the world. So remember to comment, like and subscribe. And see you again in the next video. Bye bye.